security think tank. Very good evening to you. North Korea now threatening all-out war. How seriously should the world take such threats? Well, I think the world should take this seriously, but there's always the option for a pinch of salt here. Um, of course, North Korea has attacked uh, the South Korean Navy, and there's irrefutable evidence with the pieces of the torpedo that have been found uh, from the detonation site from the seabed. But the most important factor here is the potential for escalation and the potential for miscalculation. So all sides will be seeking to mitigate risk and to prevent um, that escalation that North Korea seems to be threatening. I mean, it's worth reminding uh, viewers that there is a staggering amount of troops and armaments stacked up on either side of a border that is uh, between two countries that haven't really ever agreed peace 60 years down the track. Well, that's right. The demilitarized zone has been in place since the armistice was signed in 1953, but essentially the two sides uh, are still at war. Uh, that's very often overlooked uh, over this flashpoint in East Asia. And uh, it seems as if the potential for that flashpoint igniting is now very present. Um, what's in it for North Korea? Uh, it, bearing in mind just how volatile the situation is with its uh, near neighbour. Well, there's been some speculation that this attack was in revenge for previous attacks over the last few years and, and tit-for-tat exchanges across the demilitarised zone um, between the North and South. But other analysts are saying that perhaps this is muscle flexing by the nominated successor to Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un his son. And uh, there, there is speculation that there's some degree of um, putting a stamp of approval by the, the North's uh, military leadership on this particular attack. So as with anything with North Korea, there's immense speculation given the shroud of secrecy that cloaks the entire state. Um, but it's certainly true to say that for whatever reasons, the North Korean regime wishes to up the stakes in this confrontation. I mean, the truth is that the South can't do a lot. They don't really don't want to go to war with a potential nuclear state just uh, a mile or so across the border. So what can they do apart from protest? Well, I think there's a number of options. You're quite right. War would be absolutely disastrous. An end game. it's been suggested that North Korea could, of course, be overwhelmed by not only South Korean forces but their allies, uh, the United States. But of course, that is the worst case scenario. What is important here is for Seoul to look for soft power options uh, to contain Pyongyang. And some of those options are gaining leverage through Beijing, for example. And we mustn't forget that Kim Jong-il went on his armoured train to Beijing two weeks ago for very high-level talks with the Chinese leadership. So I think Seoul certainly has an option to get China involved in this. The other option, of course, are economic sanctions to put a stranglehold on the North. And, of course, uh, perhaps a show of force of, of some description with the United States across the demilitarised zone. Mighty, uh, mighty big gambles, though. And the truth about the sanctions also is that without China taking part, you can't really stem the flow of goods in and out. Um, so it really, again, all comes out of China largely, doesn't it? They're almost their only friends left. Yeah, there's an awful lot of expectation placed on Beijing on this particular episode. Um, of course, China, though, is reticent to... Uh, exert too much pressure on the North because they want the North to be a buffer zone against US interests in South Korea. And in the UN Security Council, it's likely that China will show some degree of reticence towards strict UN sanctions. Uh, so the likelihood of that happening is, is quite low. So overall, Seoul has very little room for maneuver in, in this issue. But it's a question of thinking, as I've said, looking towards these soft power options uh, where North Korea can be persuaded to think otherwise um, in, in this game of escalation. But, I mean, 
just a, a last thought. I mean, scratching beneath the surface, what we're probably looking at is that the, uh, the great leader's legacy lives on. Not only his son, but now his grandson, probably flexing his muscles. So no sign of a change of direction, no sign of a let-up in this hard-line enclave. No, I, d I don't think so. And uh, I think as the succession question um, gets closer and closer, and as you've described in your report, as the great leader, the dear leader, ails considerably, um, there's the possibility for this kind of muscle flexing to continue. So I think the international community certainly must be resolute and unified in coming out with a very strong statement, either through the UN or, or otherwise, to make sure that North Korea and its closest ally, China, know very well what the consequences of an, of an escalation would be. Alexander, Neil, um, thank you very much indeed for joining us and shedding some light on a very complex and volatile situation. Some other headlines from around the world. Now, Greek workers have launched a 24-hour strike protesting against tough austerity measures. Thousands of people gathered.